industry, charity, and corruption all have to do with this same building. This is the tragic tale of Gary's screw and bolt. In 1910, Pittsburgh Bolton Screw Works would purchase land on the east side of Gary, Indiana. Two years later, in the summer of 1912, Gary's Screw and Bolt would open. It initially had about a hundred workers. In 1927, the Gary Screw and Bolt Company and its parent company from Pittsburgh were consolidated into the Pittsburgh Screw and Bolt Corporation. In the 1940s, Gary Screw and Bolt had a pivotal role in supporting the war effort. Like many factories during World War II, they began switching their production line. At this time, they would hire over a thousand workers. By 1950, the number of workers had only dropped to 900. Three years earlier, in 1947, a fire broke out destroying two of the main buildings of the plant. Surprisingly, Gary Screw and Bolt was able to recover fairly quickly from this disaster. The company would be doing well until the 1980s. Due to a recession and the burdening economic problems of Gary, Gary's Screw and Bolt would close its doors in 1986. But that wouldn't be the end of this factory. What a cool place. Yeah. Beautiful industrial architecture. Well, Victor, you gonna climb up there or not? No, Nick's doing it. <laughs> I'm gonna check out these offices up here and down there. It's fine. <laughs> you know, Caleb, I don't think this place is open for business anymore. It seems like they closed it. So as you can see, there's a bunch of piles of clothes here. I'm putting his seatbelt off the car. <laughs> Look at this place. Wow, that's just incredible. Man, there's just so much of it. So freaking much of it. 
One very interesting place. I love icicles there. It's just amazing. Heavy machinery down here. This is the room I was looking for. I don't know how to get to it. We're gonna head up here, check out this building on the other side. It's only like two stories. Video. I don't like Victor's getting more shots down there. This is that bridge that we saw. There's this cool area. There's an elevator all the way down at the end. Look at this. Oh, that is incredible. That is really, really incredible. this area the other building we're going to continue on for the rest of this floor in the factory heading on downstairs it's very icy here oh what's in here Ooh. it's to the right Ooh, what's in here? Oh, an old latrine. A lot of ice on the ground. But I'm gonna take a good old fashioned Carolina look-see here, see what's in here. Ooh, more washing stations. Wow. Hey guys, that mannequin right there is Legcellent. Get it, Legcellent? Really holding back your entire week. <laughs> Yo, what would that pun cost you, not on the leg? <laughs> and then as you can see, as you can see, these stairs lead back down. Now we go down the stairs and we're back over to the main area. Wow. What an incredible place and what an ominous chair. Ominous chairs make a return again. Wow, incredible. In 2002, approximately 92 years after its opening, the Gary Urban Enterprise Association, or GUEA, purchased Gary Screw and Bolt. The organization had a plan. They were going to use the factory floor in order to store clothing that had been donated to them before it could be stripped down and shipped to countries who needed bulk textiles. Upon purchasing the plant, GUEA promised that they would do environmental cleanup. But that wouldn't come to pass, as soon, GUEA would be hit hard by corruption charges. The GUEA was founded in 1985 with the intention of buying and improving land from Gary's poorest neighborhoods. Thanks to new laws put in place around the time of the forming of the GUEA, companies and organizations could reduce their taxes that they had to pay by making charitable donations. This was an attempt to help revitalize the poor communities of Gary. Essentially, a company like U.S. Steel could donate $15 million or more to the GUEA, and they then got a cut in their taxes. In 2004, it was found that several members of the GUEA, including the director, Cho Juana L. Meeks, embezzled over $1 million through the organization. 
Johanna Meeks and several members of the county government were all prosecuted on various corruption charges. GUEA would collapse in 2007 and Gary Screwenbolt would once again become abandoned. Gary Screwenbolt is a very fascinating place. It's had a large impact on the communities of Gary, Indiana, even long after its abandonment, and it will never be forgotten. Bad time I go to bed Cause if I stay up late now I get depressed I say that like it hasn't happened For the most of today Hope it all just goes away You know, Nick, this place is a very interesting case study. Get it? Because it's a suitcase. You get it? You're only getting a case study of my corpse and I got about five minutes here. <laughs>